This is Terrence Archer Banks with Information Age Financial Solutions coming to you about technology and the new economy with how technology is affecting the economy and the gig economy. And I came across this article, I just stumbled across, I was looking at just something for just tech and different aspects of that, just trying to keep abreast of all the changes that's going on now, especially in the tech world. Um, and I came across this article called Future is in the Gig Economy is Breaking Capitalism. Of course, the article's title caught my attention, got me to do a video on it. Um, I'm going to dive right in. Uh, definitely not a website that I frequent often, but I'm going to put a link in the description as always. The gig economy is breaking capitalism. The middle class will be defeated long living, long lived technology. As technology automation advances, the decline of the middle class in the next era of capitalism will be significant. The rise of the part time work is handicapping millennials and Generation Z to not rise social, in social mobility but actually decline in relative terms in their 20s compared with the generations of their parents and grandparents. And that's really disturbing because you would believe that that's the reason why I was so interested in the article because with the technology, I, I'm believing that it should make things easier. But this is just giving a, a different view on that. And in this age, you, you need to hear all aspects of all, all aspects of news. If you disagree or you, you agree, just to make sure you have the right perspective in, in everything that goes on. So gig economy workers like Uber and Lyft drivers may be skewing lower unemployment numbers. The stock market is surging in the spring of 2019 due to an IPO influx of unprofitable companies that hack the system. <laughs> That's true. Uber, it turns out, is a, is a big, big dangerous, a bit dangerous for capitalism. And Generation X are a retirement time bomb for the American economy. American economy. The rise of the gig economy is a very bad formula for the future. Interesting. A Generation X are a retirement time bomb. I would really put that to be baby boomers, but uh, to be more uh, a threat. But maybe that is, I'm not always sure how these things are broken out, so maybe that's he's coining that correctly. Um, the rise of the part time work is creating an, an underemployment situation for millennials, that it, and this should even get worse for Generation Z and Alpha cohorts with advancing technology, technology, technological automation and transportation, fast food, retail finance, and several other sectors simultaneously. No. Unemployment numbers may not fully account for gig economy workers who may self-report as being employed, despite not being on payroll, according to a new report for the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. I love when they go to give data because that's extremely important when you're making a point. The gig economy is the first wave of how this deteriorates capitalism. The lack of worker protection, less than minimum wage type situations, and unprofitable business models of Uber and Lyft are serious threats to not just the middle class, but how we value corporations and startups and fuel their greed at the expense of American workers. Hmm. The death of fair market capitalism. The gig economy might be the biggest hack of Silicon Valley since Facebook harvested our usage our user data, shared it with all of its friends, and hijacked the internet with advertising. Think about it. Gig workers do not have the bargaining power of payroll employees, so they may also account for slowing wage growth. Part-time workers are at the mercy of the corporations like Amazon seasonal e-commerce warehouse workers. Uber and Lyft drivers make up much of the country's gig workforce, and they long complain about how the low pay and lack of benefits independent contractors deal with. Yet capitalism on the variety of Uber continues to bulldoze workers' rights. Wow. I'm um, kind of reading this kind of fast and jumble up a couple words because even this is the first time you really get to dive in. Even though I, I glanced over the article, I said, wow, this is, this is really important. It's something that I want to put on the channel just for people to think about because, again, it's just where things are moving to and why the, and this just proves the point of why the old ideas are not working anymore. We really need to think completely differently. The mental health impacts of the gig economy and remote workers and those who work at home is only beginning to be understood. Underemployment also has a social cost beyond money, so sure, and impacts the quality of human lives. Part-time workers are easier to exploit, easier to underpay, and often go get less benefits. No, the gig economy is not a good thing for capitalists. Mm. The gig economy is responsible for wage growth stagnation. While unemployment may be at record lows, the growing number of gig workers who aren't on a payroll may be skewing the data, according to a new report. The Reserve Reserve Bank of Dallas, one of the 12 regional reserve banks that make up the centralized Fed, found that although unemployment is low, wage growth has not increased. 
Higher debt to income ratios are also likely due to unemployment, among other factors. One reason could be the rise of gig workers. The report found that the number of workers who pay self-employment tax has risen steadily over the past 35 years. The gig economy creates a trap for the lower middle class and will be considered a form of technology of slavery. Wow. So basically, according to San Francisco Fred, America's part-time worker problem is permanent. I'll repeat that again. So basically, according to the San Francisco Fed, America's part-time worker problem is permanent. Analysts on Wall Street are already warning that many of these new, 20, new 2019 IPO companies are deeply unprofitable and their business model shows a poor path to profitability. Yet we fund the gig economy as if it's part of the future. But what kind of future do we want for capitalism? Much of Uber's funding comes from Japan and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, are these the American companies we want trapping people or falling out of the middle class? Wow. I mean, this article is just packed and full with so much potency just in terms of what I'm reading. Really encourage you to take a look at it, even if you completely disagree with the, <laughs> the findings. I don't know how you could, but, you know, it's I found out people sometimes deny even the smallest thing. The rise of part-time work isn't a good thing. It doesn't liberate people to lead more fulfilling lives. It makes them so impoverished they can't afford the experiences in life they want to have. This impoverishment is what younger millennials and generations Z are suffering in the new economic reality of America. So you want to be a gig economy or remote worker? A historically high number of Americans have part-time jobs but want full-time positions. That is true. The gig economy isn't a safety net. It's more like a poverty trap. The increase in independent contractors may skew unemployment figures because firms can hire contractors without adding them to their payrolls. Another true fact. Automation in the gig economy won't liberate workers. They will create even wider wealth gaps. Independent contractors are not counted as unemployed despite the fact they don't work consistent schedules. Gig workers typically work on and off during the month, according to a recent study from the J.P. Morgan Chase Institute. While male bias and male bias in VC culture in Silicon Valley's network wealth effect decisions are made that will only continue to damage capitalism in the middle class. The gig economy is just a first wave. Consider what is coming. Technological automation hasn't even begun to accelerate into its next gear. It's true. The increase in gig workers may account for subdued wage growth because independent contractors have less bargaining power. Repeat that again. The increase in gig workers may account for subdued wage growth because independent contractors have less bargaining power. It's very true. Silicon Valley is breaking up the social contract implicit in capitalism by giving us startups that defy workers' rights. We're building a very bleak and dark future for workers and consumers. If Facebook destroyed the media industry, Uber and others will destroy the transportation industry, where tech companies are cannibalizing capitalism, the middle class, and democracy. This is not a criticism. This is a fact. Wow. Yet we still seem to hero worship Silicon Valley as its innovative, as is if as if it's innovative china is innovative yeah it's true china is very innovative silicon valley is just the big boys club it's always been with inside preference on wall street if you want to deteriorate the middle class you socially engineer such a thing as a gig economy while unemployment nears five decade lows the number of gig economy workers has increased over the past five years according to jp morgan chase driven largely by transportation apps such as lyft and uber the gig economy systematically takes labor and time from the poor to benefit the rich. If technology automation flows this trend, capitalism as we know it will break sometime in the next 50 years. Business as usual, technology automation is coming and it doesn't actually care about workers, people, or human rights. Wow, he said a mouthful, kind of read through it quickly. Encourage you to read this at your leisure. I'm telling you folks, we're in different, different age. Keep abreast of this. And if you actually are an Uber driver or Lyft driver, it's something to consider. And if you have children going forward, and and this is the new way of things are moving to, we have to really be in a different kind of mindset and do things differently. If this video has been any value to you, please subscribe, leave some comments, um, and I'm out.